Hey everyone, so I'm in my greenhouse today and here I am. There's my greenhouse and I'm really excited because today, January the 23rd, I am going to plant out my, a few of my cold frames or we'll see one or two of them with some of the cold season hardy veggies that I've been growing inside under grow lights. Now, typically, at this point, I would have already planted the greenhouse back in the fall and whatever hadn't wouldn't have been harvested by that time, I would have left inside the cold frames. And at this point, they would already be inside the cold frames and kind of sleeping about ready to wake up for the year or for the spring. But um, and then last year I had planted in the greenhouse early March. So I'm gonna try this slightly over a month earlier and see what happens. I suspect that everything will be fine. I've also looked at the forecast for the next two weeks and it looks really good. Now for us, zone 5A, 5B right on the border. Typically it's pretty cold at this time of year. Now in Celsius, I would say we can be maybe minus 10, minus 15 at this time of year, but today's two degrees. And the next two weeks, the prognosis looks pretty much the same, zero to two degrees not really even below zero during the daytime, which is really unheard of here in my climate. So as you can see behind me is all white. We have had snow, but in the greenhouse, it's really comfortable. Plus I do have a space heater. So while I'm in here, I've turned it on just so it's comfortable. And actually it's already comfortable. And all I'm wearing is like a vest today and I'm perfectly comfortable in my greenhouse to work. So I'm really excited. So the experiment is plant it into the greenhouse now. So end of January. Um, now had it been minus 20, I probably would have waited and I would have kept everything inside the house under, go, under the grow lights and just waited for the warmest of winter days. Um, but you know, two degrees, things are good. Things are melting outside. So I think I'm gonna try. Now the cold frames have already been inside this greenhouse for at least two, maybe three weeks now. So I think, and plus the ground in the greenhouse, the grace beds here, they have uh, never frozen. So, uh, and we have had minus 20, minus, I think minus 20 was the coldest so far this year, but it hasn't frozen. So I am crossing my fingers. I'm hoping, this is a great experiment. Can I plant at the end of January into cold frames and have success? So as I was saying, minus 20, it would have been really cold in here. Even with the space heater, we probably wouldn't have been able to get to zero. So I probably would have waited a little bit. Minus 10, sunny day. I would have snuck the uh, seedlings into here and popped them in under the cold frames anyways, just to see what would happen. But because it's two, it's gonna be one, it's gonna be zero the next two weeks. I'm not really worried. Nighttime temperatures, even if they fall to minus five or minus 10, I'm still not worried because the cold frames help to insulate and give the seedlings extra protection. Now, am I planting cucumbers, basil, and tomatoes in here? No, if I planted that right now, they would die. They would not make it past a day because they need hot temperatures. But during the spring, during the fall, at this time of year, you know, under a cold frame, cold hardy veggies like mustards, like uh, bok choy, green onions, lettuce, spinach, kale, arugula, all these seedling mash, a corn salad, um, all these seedlings can handle cold temperatures. Even Claytonia, one of my favorite cute little tiny greens, they actually will bolt quickly. So it's great to grow them when it's really cold outside. Otherwise they will bolt and turn, you know, grow some flowers and they're still edible, but not as tender as when they're just coming up. So anyways, experiment, I'm gonna plant, I'm gonna show you what I'm doing and uh, also show you uh, growing updates as they go and show you what I'm doing. So you could see, maybe be inspired to try it on your own. Anyone here in the Northern Hemisphere uh, growing when it's cold like this winter outside, but pleasant in the greenhouse, right? Like uh, all I have is a vest and I feel pretty good. So let's get started and I'll uh, show you what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm ready and I'm going to start and I'm going to plant these. These are the red mustard. Now, these are seeds that I saved from about 2015. So the reason I love seed saving is because I find that the seeds that I end up saving always have the highest germination for years. Like seeds I might buy um, through a seed supplier and I love many of my seed suppliers, uh, many of my favorite seed companies. Um, I do trust them. 
But, you know, when you save seeds from your favorite plants that you have in your garden, what happens is their genetics help them to adapt to your climate. So I always find that the seeds that I save from my garden are always really viable for a very long time. Now these are 2015, we're in 2020. These are, look how healthy they are. Like this is amazing. And so basically just about every seed I plant from 2015 of this red mustard um, variety that I have, uh, I think they're called giant mustard or something. Uh, they've all germinated. So they're ready to go. Now, had I been planting these to the garden into the, in the spring, I'd probably plant them at this size too. So this is just about the right size. They are on their second true leaf. So this will be the first true leaf. The cotyledon was down here. Then the first true leaf. And now we're on the second tree leaf. So they are the perfect size. The roots aren't too big um, inside. They're not too um, developed. They're not overly developed. They're not too tangly. So it's the perfect size. So I open up my cramp cold frame here. And I really like using this tool. Now, what I'll do is I'll post a link in the description below. This is, um, I have this in my shop and this is called a dibber. Dibbers are fantastic tools and I have them in all sizes. I even have dibbers to grow seedlings, like from seeds. So I have tiny little plastic ones and they're in my shop as well. Um, I have a shorter handled one and I have this one. Then I even have one that I made from an old garden fork that I had that had the fork part had fallen off the, uh, the uh, stick, I guess, <laughs> or the handle. And I use that as a dibber for like when I want to stand up in the garden and plant garlic or any kind of seedlings. But this, these ones here are, great, are really fantastic. And I really like this long handled one because I don't have to bend down too low. So I'm going to use this today. And what you do, all you do is poke a hole into the soil. And I will show you afterwards what it looks like. Um, and then you put your, you poke a hole, you pop out a little seedling, put it right in the hole. It's planted. It's so easy. It's so fast. So I'm going to plant it right here. Let's see if I can show this to you a little bit better. And I don't want to shake the camera. No, that's a big pet peeve for people. Let's see here. Okay, maybe I could show you back here this corner. Okay, so I'm going to make a hole with my dibber. And all I do is poke it in like this. And I'm going to make six holes because I've got six little seedlings in here. Okay, so I'm making these holes, really simple. And now I'm going to take my little seedling, pushing it up from the bottom, just squeeze it a little bit to loosen it up. I don't wanna pull on the, on the plant too much. And there we go. There's my perfect little seedling. As you can see, the root system is not overly developed, it's just the right size. And all you do is pop it into the hole. Now this soil is soft, it has not frozen. So it's just perfect for planting in. Now all my garden beds outside because it's been so cold, they're all rock hard frozen. But in the greenhouse, even in the beds that are not under cold frames, they're not frozen. So I really find it excellent. It's a great opportunity if you do have a greenhouse or some kind of polytunnel that you use that space, you don't need to wait until everyone else starts planting when it's the final frost date or just before. Get growing, you know, give it a try. Try and see what you can do if you have a cold frame or some kind of double hoop tunnel. Try it, plant in it, and you'll see, at least give it a try and see if it can grow something. Okay, so that one's planted. I'm gonna do the next one. Just pulling it out. There we go. Okay, and all I do is pop it right into the hole of the, where they put the dibber. So I put the dibber in, okay, the hole is there, all it does is just pops into place and it's ready. What I love about this time of year too is there's no insects. Typically I have a ton of ants in my greenhouse and I don't have any because they're all hibernating right now. So it's a really great way to get growing when there's no insect pests. You don't have to worry that a, you know, a white, a cabbage white butterfly or a flea beetle is gonna come and attack your brassica seedlings. You know, you plant your arugula when it's cold outside, when everyone is sleeping, and you don't have to worry about getting insect holes. You know, I don't have to worry that I'm gonna have green caterpillars crawling all over my seedlings. So I really like to take advantage of this time. It's like this bonus time that never really existed for me and now I've got it, and it's, it's a gift, it's free, so why not, right? Okay, One, uh, two more of this little seedling. So just gently play with the bottom of the, plant, of, the uh, of the seed cell, right? 
to pop it out. You do not want to pull it by the stem. If you pull it by the stem, you risk uh, breaking it off or damaging it. And one more. Make another last hole here and I will show you what it looks like when I'm all done. Again, so you just tease out the bottom gently and then it like literally just falls into your hand and it's ready. Now in these little seed cells, I did sow three seeds in each cell and some have germinated all three, some have two and some only have one. But I like to multi-sow when I plant, so I'm not afraid of putting in uh, too many into one, let them grow comfortably. They will happily grow three together and they'll just turn into a nice little cluster of uh, red mustard. And I do the same thing for lettuce typically and for many of my leafy greens and I just harvest from the outside. And if I find that it gets too crowded, then I can pull one out, but I try to multi-sow so I have extra plants and save space to maximize on how much I plant. Okay, last thing to do, there's my label, the day that I started it. It says December the 30th, 2019. This is the earliest I've ever started. I guess late in the winter, but earliest in, for the next gardening year, the earliest that I've ever started seeds. So all you do now is pop a label in, and then you remember what you have there. Now I'm gonna pick up the camera, and I'm gonna show you what I have. Okay, so here they are planted. And as you can see, the spacing like this. Now I don't expect any kind of crazy accelerated growth at this time of year, so I don't mind putting them a little closer together. Typically I space them slightly wider apart because they do grow into larger plants. But uh, in this case, because I will be harvesting these as baby leaves, these will be just fine. Also, uh, by the time that it starts to warm up outside, these will be ready to come out. So I would say by April, these should be here until April, at which point I will have replacement plants. So for the replacement plants, I will plant those in the house probably at the end of February to have them ready to come into the greenhouse in April. These will come out and I'll replace them with something else. Anyway, that's it. I hope that you've enjoyed that. I'm gonna flip the camera again. Anyway, I hope that was fun for you as it was for me. I really, I'm so excited to get growing at this time of year. It's something that is new to me. You know, typically I'm just enjoying uh, any leftover uh, plants that I had planted from the previous year. So I'm really excited that I can actually get in the greenhouse and plant something. Um, and it really helps to beat the winter blues. Uh, winter doesn't really seem to affect me as much as it used to because I do have a greenhouse. So. If you ever can get a small, even a tiny greenhouse, it is incredibly satisfying to be able to extend your season much longer than you know is typically allowed for your zone and for the days that you have for the garden. Uh, it's just an amazing feeling, that freedom, that ability to use the land that you have in a really, um, positive way to maximize what you can grow to help feed your families to just you know grow something of your own doesn't have to be a lot even if you don't have a greenhouse or you have some way to put in um you know like a like a cold frame or some kind of protected hoop cover maybe with two covers over top anything that you can to get growing and you know it's if you can it's really great it's so much fun it's so satisfying and uh, i'm really glad i could share this with you Anyway, I uh, look forward to showing you updates and uh, of what is growing in this greenhouse. I'm really excited to uh, see if this works. If it works, then fantastic. And I know that from now on, if I don't get or have the time to plant in this greenhouse in the fall, and sometimes I don't because I'm so busy, I'm really excited to see that if this works, I now can really get growing beginning of February. February 2nd is the end of the winter Persephone days, the days when the, when our, when the days are just long enough to give our greens, our plants, some kind of enough light to get growing. Things start to, to sprout. You'll notice your garlic cloves are sprouting, your onions are sprouting. Things want to get growing if there's an internal clock in all these plants and they just know that days are just long enough to get growing. So I'm really excited to utilize it. Anyway, that's it for me here in my greenhouse. I'm so excited to be able to talk to you all again. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. If you like my video, please be sure to click the like button to give me a thumbs up. Also, please subscribe to my channel and be sure to click the notification bell in order to be notified of any upcoming videos as YouTube will only show you videos that you've subscribed to uh, if you click that bell. 
So please do that and I look forward to chatting with you all again soon. If there's anything you want me to talk about, please leave me a comment below and if you have any questions, do so as well and I'll be so happy to answer them. That's it for me for today. Talk to you all soon. Happy gardening. Bye for now.